So let's have a look at CMOS layout principles. That's the problem number one, P1, where we are drawing the stick diagram for a CMOS inverter gate. So this is a schematic. We have input A and output Y, and the terminals for these switches can be marked like this, drain and source of NMOS, and source and drain of the BMOS. Once we mark that, let's have a look how we can use the stick diagram for the CMOS inverter gate layout. So all the la layers that are used are marked here in different colors. For example, we have a layer for metal, P plus diffusion, N plus diffusion, and polysilicon. P plus and N plus diffusion are the active areas for the transistors. So here is the active area for the PMOS transistor. Here is the active area of the NMOS transistors. That is the source and drain of the NMOS. That's the source and the drain of the PMOS. Polysilicon indicated by red line can be drawn over the active areas with some overlap as shown here. As soon as the polysilicon is drawn, its width right here defines and separates the source and drains of the transistors. So you see the source of PMOS is tied to the VDD, source of NMOS is tied to the ground. The drains of the transistors are tied together. So as we can see the drains here, they are connected through the metal line and that is nothing but output of the circuit. Here, A indicates on the polysilicon input of the circuit. So this is how we completed a layout for the CMOS inverter gate. Let's have a look at problem number two, where we use the stick diagram to draw the layout for the two input CMOS NAND gates. So we have two inputs for the CMOS NAND gate and NMOS switches are connected in series. PMOS switches are connected in parallel. Let's have an understanding about how terminals are connected. For example, that's the drain and source of the NMOS transistor. That's the drain and source of another NMOS transistor. So this is the transistor one, this is transistor two. Similarly, for the PMOS, the sources of these PMOS switches are tied to VDD and the drains are connected to the drain of the upper NMOS. So once we have this notation, we can move to draw the layout. As we see here, different layers are indicating different areas of the transistor circuit. So here we can mark this terminal, the source, this is the NMOS. And here we have area for the PMOS. So the source of the NMOS is tied to the ground. Here is the drain and here is the drain of another NMOS and here is the source. Right, now uh, basically we have a drain here we have a source and the drain here. And sources of the PMOS, they are tied to VDD, as we can see and refer to the schematic. And the drain area are connected together. So drain of the upper PMOS is tied to the drain of the bottom NMOS, as we can see in the schematic as well. And that is nothing but the output terminal Y, where we can see this green line is the output of this circuit. The polysilicons, when they are drawn on the active areas, they are forming the inputs of the circuit. So that's how we complete this layout for the CMOS NAND gate. Let's have a look at problem number three, where we are drawing now the layout for the two input CMOS NOR gate. So NOR gates, we know that two NMOS switches right here, they are in parallel and 
two PMOS switches are in series with each other. This will form a NOR function or NOR logic circuit. We have two inputs A and B to the circuit. So let's have another way to indicate. So you see now the source of the upper PMOS and the drain of the drain of it. Again, the source of EFs of the PMOS and the drain of it. And the drain of these two transistors, which are NMOS, they are connected to the drain of this PMOS. And the sources of this NMOS are tied to ground. So we can see that in mark the terminals, sources are connected to the ground and the drains are interconnected of these transistors. And this drain is connected to the drain of the PMOS transistors. Source of this transistor is connected to the VDD. And here we have drain and the source of it. So since we don't have any connection of this to the input output or the power line, we don't draw the contact. Contacts are indicated by the black cross marks. We use the contacts because we want to connect the metal lines to the corresponding layers, whether it is polysilicon or to the active areas such as P plus diffusion or N plus diffusions. So we see now we have completed the layout for the CMOS NOR gate. So let's have a look at another example where we are asked to draw the layout for the four input CMOS NAND gate. So we can mark these terminals like this. We know that how the sources and drains are connected. So we see here the sources of these transistors, they are connected to the VDD and the bottom transistor and MOS, the source, which is connected to the ground. So similarly, you can mark all these transistors, terminals, and accordingly, we can complete the layout for the four input CMOS NAND gates. So you see here the drains of these transistors, the drains of this transistor, here is the drain of the NMOS, and that is the output. Output is here, right here. So this is how we can complete the layout for the four input CMOS NAND gate. What about problem number five for the four input CMOS NOR gate? So four NMOS transistors are in parallel. Four PMOS transistors are in series. So the upper PMOS source region is connected to the VDD and all sources for the NMOS transistors, we see here, they are connected to the ground terminal and the poly lines are drawn over the active areas to define the inputs and this define the active areas for NMOS and the PMOS transistor. And here we will have the output of the circuit, which is the output line Y. So that's how we can complete the layout for these transistors.